Okay. So, okay, almost 80 people are here. Let's start. Ready? Yes, Abdel. Okay, so, okay, let me to, to talk about, because we talk about one way and over. Okay, one way is a techniques and method in data analysis is that you can compare more than two groups and there are two assumptions. One assumption, of course, it is normality data. The second assumption that I discussed is sample size. And then the third assumption is the homogeneity of variance. Same as uh, t-test, uh, that if you remember, we had two t, t-value and Welch value. t-value we used when the variances are homogeneous, when the variances are not homogeneous or not equal, then we used Welch test. Okay, so the same story actually goes for ANOVA. Suppose that I have three groups here, and I want to compare between these two groups. This is an experiment. Uh, the lifetime uh, for a product uh, under three kind of factories, the product from factory one, factory two, and factory three. And the researcher wants to see whether there is a difference between the lifetime, between the, among these factories for the lifetime of that product or not. So first of all, we need to convert the data to the SPSS, right? So remember, when you want to convert this data, let me to copy this data. So entering the, uh, what do you call it? Data entry is very important in, uh, we cannot copy and paste this data in SPSS. This is for, because we have IV and we have DV, right? What is the DV? DV is the lifetime. What is the IV? What is the IV in this study? Three in factor. Yeah, the IV is the factory, right? Factory one, factory two. I mean, the type of the factory is your independent variable. So that's why when we want to enter the data, we have to rearrange it. So this is the number factory number one. And then factory number two, we just copy and paste this data. So this is factory number two, we just drag it and drop it. And then factory number three, control C and then control V and then this is three. That's all. So when you want to read the data for a species, remember I want to teach you something. If you have any Excel data and you want, because some of the softwares, I mean the online survey or some other softwares will generate and the Excel file. So if you want to save this data file, sorry, read this data file in SPSS, uh, of course you can copy and paste, but the easy way is just suppose that if I save this data on my desktop and then I just put ANOVA table, ANOVA data. So I save this data Excel file, open your SPSS, open your SPSS and then go to file and then open and then data. So when you, when you read the data here, select the Excel file. Desktop, okay, so this is ANOVA data. You just open it. When you open Excel file, then you can see here how easily the SPSS can read the data from different sheet in your Excel file. For example, in my Excel file, I have only sheet, one sheet. So then easily it can be converted. So, okay, that's all. So now data were converted, were uh, imported uh, from Excel file to SPSS file. So now my research, my research, let, let's write down our research hypothesis. So how many groups do I have? Three groups. Three. Alternative null hypothesis, right? So means the group one equal to group two equal to group three. So means no difference. What is the alternative hypothesis? What shall I write here? Ding. 
Any idea? So this is the null hypothesis, is right? There is no difference among groups. What shall I write here? Group one not equal to group two. Or maybe group one equal not group three, group two not three, yes. or odd. So as long as two groups at least Two groups are different. If two groups are different, this hypothesis is, is rejected, right? So we don't use this, the, what do you call it, the <clears throat> We don't use this form that G1 is not equal to G2 because as long as, so we look at here, if this happened in our results, again, the hypothesis is zero or null hypothesis will be rejected. So we just leave it as it is. At least two groups are different. That's all. So now back to data, what I need to do, like, other non-parametric tests. Okay, the sample size is equal, no worry. Then we need to just check the normality. We go to analyze, uh, explore, the DV, and this is your IV. Plot with normality test. Sample size is small. So we just look at the Kolmogorov Smirnov test. Is it normal or not? So this results, Kolmogorov significant or not? Hello? No, doctor. So it, it is not significant, right? When it's nope. not significant, means my data is... Normally distributed. Thank you. So as you can see here, both results. And this is the reason of small sample size. For a small sample size, of course, we can trust to these results. But remember, when we do is the, when we do the normality test, of course, we have the box plot, we have QQ plot. So look at here, we have the box plot. It is skewed, but no worry, no more, no worry. There is no outliers. So then, what we need to do? Go to the analyze. Sorry, go to data. This time, we want to run the ANOVA. Go to analyze compare mean, and then one way ANOVA. So IV is your factor, DV is your dependent least outcome, response, everything's what you want to call it. <laughs> so then under options, descriptive, and then homogeneity test of variance. Can you see here Welch test? The Welch test, we just select it. Why? Because in case if the variances are not homogeneous, we report the Welch test. So let's run it, continue, and then okay, finish. So this table, let me to copy this table all, and then let's open it. Can you mute your microphone, sorry? So now the first table is descriptive statistic. The mean, a standard deviation of factory one, factory two, factory three. This is the mean of lifetime, the mean of lifetime. We don't like, we don't care about the total. So this is the standard deviation or variance. Of course, we have the 95% confidence interval for the mean and the minimum and maximum in our sample. So followed by this table, we have the ANOVA table. But the problem here, can I trust to this ANOVA table? No, we did not check one of the assumptions. What was that assumptions? Homogeneity of variance. I think I forgot to copy that table. Yeah, this table. So remember when, when we check 
the homogeneity of variance let me to just copy somewhere here so this table this table is test of the homogeneity of variance based on the mean or median so look at the p value as long as the p value is more than 0 0.05 means variances are variances are what do you think not significant when the t when this p value is not significant so means the variances three variances are equal great equal or same or homogeneous homogeneous okay so means there is no heterogeneity the variances are homogeneous that's good so when the variances are homogeneous then you can trust to these results you can relay on result of the ANOVA but suppose that if this p value was significant then instead of the ANOVA then you have to report the Welch test clear so means a very simple way first first check the normality second check the homogeneity of variance if the variance if this homogeneity is sick or maybe not sick means more than 0 0.05 or less than 0 0.05 so if the variances If the variances are heterogeneous, means significant, then you have to report the Welch. If not, then still you can results, you can relay on result of the ANOVA table. In this example, since the variances are homogeneous, of course the sample size also equal, good, then we report the ANOVA table. What does it mean? Groups are significantly different or not? The variance between groups is significantly, I mean, it is significant. Statistically, it is significant. What does it mean? Means at least two groups. have different mean clear yes so now <clears throat> we just prove that groups are not same but we don't know the details we don't know the details because we have three groups right the average of group one we don't know this difference, this significant difference is between group one with two, group one with group three, or two with three. We don't know. So this is a very general, what do you call it, results. But of course, we need more details. Do uh, anybody, does anybody know how to do for the next step? This is general results, what we need to do. If this one significant, of course we need more details. What shall I do? Post hoc. 
Thank you very much. Yes, post hoc or mean comparison test. So if you look at the PSS here, when we run the ANOVA, we have the post hoc test. There are different types of the post hoc test, if I'm not mistaken, in my slides. So hopefully that you can see here the post hoc test. There are many types of the post hoc test. So the first group of post hoc test can be applied when the variances are equal, means variances are homogeneous. Different types of post hoc test, least significant difference, Bonferroni, Schaeffer, Student Newman Collis, Toki, Toki's B, Duncan, Hutchbergs, Gabriel, Duncan, Waller, Duncan, and Donnet. Donnet, when you have a control group, sometimes in some of experiments, we have a control treatment, especially for the lab work. In the social science, medical science, human-based science, we advise to use the Bonferroni. In engineering, agriculture, biotechnology, biological science, which mainly based on experimental uh, studies, we advise to use the LST or Duncan. Of course, the TOKI also can be applied for the social science and education and human science. So, of course, you need to know more about this kind of statistical test, post hoc test. You can click on help and read more details about this kind of. But to me, the Bonferroni is one of the best ways, safe and secure techniques. The second group of post hoc test can be used when the variances are not equal. So means when you use Welch test followed by Welch, you can only use one of these four tests. And the common test is Tom Hans and Games Howell. This is the most frequently used test for mean comparison when the variances are not equal. So in our study, the variances are equal. That's why I prefer to use the, for example, Duncan or Bonferroni, no matter. I just choose both of them. Continue. And one more thing that I forgot to tell you, under option also we have the mean plots. So this is the mean plot, just graph. But we don't care. You know why? Because um, if you want to draw the graph, I better to just use the Excel form. So uh, the reason that always I advise my students and my colleagues to use Excel file to draw the charts. This, this is the factory one, for example, factory one, and then I just drag it until factory three, right? So if you want to draw the factory, this is the mean. Very easy, you go to the bar charts. So now easy, you know, and also you can add the data table or data labels, you can put axes, you can you can play around, grid lines, remove it, you just put, play around the data, you know, the borders, <laughs> solid, black, correct? So this graph easily can be converted to your reports and then paste it here, oops, sorry. So this graph, even in words, it is editable, so means if you want to change the color of, of this box, you go to the design. You can just change the size of change chart type. So maybe you just want to convert it to the 3D graphs or, you know, easy you want to convert it because it is from the same family all of them from microsoft office but when you bring a graph from the spss it is very difficult to edit the graph you can change the fonts so that's why always i advise my students don't do not do the don't use the spss for graphical uh, purpose i mean uh, if if they plan to do some uh, what do you call it visual presentation 
uh, always I advise them to use the Excel. It is easy, even if you just copy this one to PowerPoint, right? So even in the PowerPoint, you just easily you can convert it to the PowerPoint. That's all. In PowerPoint, also you can just double click, and then maybe you edit your far. You can change the color. Simple. Even even if you want to look at the data, you just edit the data. You go back to data and change it. You know they are linked together. Clear? Yes. Thank you. Okay, back to SPSS. Sorry. Uh, when we select uh, these things, as you can see here, we have the bar, the, the bar charts. Okay, so descriptive statistic, homogeneity test of variance, ANOVA and VELCH. Then you need to decide which one should be reported. And then the post hoc test. This is the post hoc test. Let me to just copy again here and then paste it. So, oops. Copy. So this is post hoc test. The post hoc test is pairwise comparison. As you can see here, this is based on the Bonferroni. Differences between one and two. Factory one and factory two. Are they significantly different from each other? Yes. Factory one with factory three. Are they significantly different? Yes. 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 Okay, two with one and one with two are same. Look at the numbers. They are same. So that, that's why we ignore this line. Two with three. Are they significantly different? Yes. So means all the factories are statistically different from each other. Three with one, we have it here. Three with two, we already have it here. So we, we don't report it. So when you want to report this table, When you want to report this table, you copy this table. Of course, always I use Excel as a plain text. I just report this one. So this last two, I remove it. One, two, one, three, two, one. We don't need it. And then just copy this table in a Word file. How fast? And Control V, double click, format, template, remove the shading. So that's all. Layout, uh, and then all. Uh, error bar. This is, uh, uh, okay, wait, wait, a standard error. This is the P value. And this is 95% CI. That's all. So this is API table. But remember, all this P value should be reported less than 0 0.01. So this is academic style. Remember, reporting is very important, especially when you're writing your thesis, your articles. Always try to, always try to API style. For example, for ANOVA, so there are some guidelines how to report the one-way ANOVA, you know, APA style. You can you can learn how to write because one of the reason that always maybe you receive rejection uh, for your articles or maybe you receive comments during your viva, it's because of wrong or non-academic reporting. So reporting is very important. So that's why I strongly advise you to, to report your results based on the academic style. There are some guidelines, right? And uh, make sure that what you are reporting is based on that guideline. Okay, so you say something, right? You ask me a question. Someone asked me a question. Can you repeat it again? 
Yes, what about the error bar? Okay, the error bar in Excel file, if you want to draw the error bar, you just right click here and then error bar, select error bar and then customize it. More option, customize it, then customize a specify value. Up and down is a standard error. Don't put a standard deviation. So for example, I select a standard error for up and then a standard error for down and that's all. Now I have the standard error is my computer. Got it? Yes, thank you. Very simple. <laughs> but of course you need to import your standard error as well. Okay, now let me to, I actually, I, I didn't want to explain about the standard error because it will be a bit, a bit challenging, but let's explain what is a standard error. Let me open a box and talk about a standard error, and then we go back to the ANOVA. What is a standard error? And what is the difference between a standard error and a standard deviation? I'm here, don't worry. Any idea? Standard error of the mean? Uh, generally, what does it mean, a standard error? Because we, if you remember, for skewness, we had a standard error. For cortices, we had a standard error. For mean, we have a standard error. What does it mean, a standard error? It's very important to understand the standard error. Maybe the error is from the population and the standard is from the uh, sample. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I received an urgent uh, call. I was waiting from the morning, but they call me right now. Okay, back it's to, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, now what is the standard error and standard deviation? A standard deviation we discussed this morning. It is a measure of the variation within your sample, right? Discrepancy, dispersion in your sample. What, what does it mean, a standard error? Someone start uh, talking about the standard error. Can you repeat it again, please? Uh, this one from the population, the, the, the error. Uh, not exactly, but yes, it is related to population, but it is not from the population. Um, it's the degree that the sample mean deviates from the population mean. Mm, much more close, yes, yes, yeah. Any idea? Okay, never mind. Let's explain to you. This is very important to understand the standard error. Suppose that you have a population. Suppose that my population is one, two, three, four, five. So this is my population. And suppose that I want to do the sampling and I'm able only to collect two samples. Can you tell me how many samples that I can collect from this population with two members? One sample can be two and three, right? The other sample, two and four. The other sample, two and five. Mm -hmm. This is all possible samples, right? Three and four, sorry. Three and four. And then three and five, right? And four and five. Any, any other possible samples I can select from this population with two members? No. This is the all samples, right? This is all possible samples that I can collect, I can select from this population all possible samples with two members. So it means n is equal to two. So can you tell me what is the average, the mean? I mean the x bar for this sample. How much is the average here? 2.5. The next one? Three. Three. 3.5, 3.5, 3 4, 4, 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4
So how much is the, this is the population, right? So how much is the average of the population? Means how much is the move? Three point five. Thank you. Three point five. So how much is the average of the means? So look at here. The means, if I want to draw the distribution of the means, it will be a normally distributed always. So means we have x bar 1, x bar 2, x bar 3. So all of them are the means. So the means of different samples also they have a distribution and this distribution always is a normal the mean of the means means x double bar will be how much is the mean of the total 2.5 3.5.5 again it will be 3.5 so means the x double bar is equal to the mean of the population right and the individual are different samples. So look at here. Each distribution, each distribution also has its own standard deviation. A standard deviation of means is called a standard error. Why? I will explain to you later. So remember, when the standard deviation decreases, so means each sample will be close to the what? To the population. So means if the standard error is small, let me to draw another chart here. So these are samples. Sample one, sample two, and sample, for example, 10. And this is X double bar, which is equal to the mean of the population. Okay, so suppose that if, the, if this distribution, a standard deviation is a small, correct? What does it mean? So means each sample will be a good estimator from the population, right? So a standard error means a standard deviation of all possible samples. But mathematically and in the real world, it is not possible to calculate the standard deviation of all different samples. Suppose that if your population is 1000 and your sample size is 300, so you know how many samples you can create and you can collect in the reality, it is impossible to do that. But mathematician has proved that a standard error of mean, which is a measure of accuracy of your sample to population, because again, I just want to repeat again. So when the standard error is small, means each sample will be a better estimators from the population because people are, I mean, the subjects are close to the mean. Correct? So let me to show you something. Can you see my pic? Can you see my pic, my, my face? Yes. In the monitor? Look at here. This is a normal distribution. When the normal distribution is, a, the standard deviation is small, means all the subjects will be close to the mean. And we already proved that the mean of the means is the mean of the population. So means each sample will be a good representative from the population. Low standard error means your estimation from samples are good estimators from the population parameters. Clear? Clear. Okay. Clear. Good. So now, and that is the point. Uh, in our results, that's why if you look at the results, 
we have always when we report when we want to report as error bar error bar or y bar refer to the standard error i saw many articles that the students researcher they mistakenly they report the standard deviation this is wrong so now you know the the the, the interesting part is here the interesting part is here so how can i decrease my sampling error or a standard error a statistician proved that there is a relationship between a standard deviation and a standard error. What is the relationship? A standard error of a sample is equal a standard deviation divided by square root of n. So how can I improve, how can I decrease my standard error? How can I increase my accuracy? Because when I decrease a standard error, the accuracy will be increased. So how? By two techniques. Increase your sample size and decrease the variation. This variation can be decreased. If you remove the outlier, the standard deviation will be small. So the accuracy depends on two factors sample size and then variation within sample is it clear i hope that you are not confused i try to make it simple as much as possible <laughs> okay that's all for a standard error please after this workshop don't stop and again and again don't Expect too much from this two days workshop. It is a good starting point. It is not ending point. And don't expect after this workshop you will be a statistician, never. <laughs> Correct? But actually I, I'm trying to, I, I will do my best to, to prepare you for a long journey. It's up to you whether you want to continue or not. Back to the results. Okay, this is the ANOVA results. The result of the analysis of variance. We compare and we did the post hoc test. If you look at the result of the post hoc test using Duncan, this is Duncan. Remember, this table is for Duncan. Duncan, let me to copy this table. Duncan for us, generated three subset these are subset the mean in each subset are statistically different from each other so in this study as you can see here we have three different distinct subset so means the highest mean or lifetime belong to factory two which is significantly higher from factory three and factory three is the highest, uh, actually is significantly higher than factory one. So means all, all these differences are significant. But sometimes maybe you find something else. Let me to show you. I just want to manipulate my data a bit. Then you can see some. So now, if I run the analysis again, so now, what do you think? What this results sounds? Factory two and three, they are under the same category. What does it mean? Means they are not, they are different, but not statistically different. But both of them are statistically different from the subset two, because subset or subgroups are statistically different from each other. The groups who are located in each subset are not statistically different. Is it clear? Yes. 
Okay, that's that's good. So now we finish the one way and over here, and then we move to another types of analysis of variance, which is called two way ANOVA. So do you know what does it mean two way ANOVA? Oh, sorry, sorry, I forgot to tell you something about here. No, 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 not two way ANOVA. So now we want to talk about repeated measure ANOVA. I made a mistake, sorry. Repeated measure ANOVA. The repeated measure, me, repeated measure ANOVA can be used when you have more than two samples, but the samples are matched or paired. Can you give me some example for this situation? Hello? Why you are silent mode? Are you sleeping? <laughs> no, doctor. We are listening. Okay, so good. I, I expect from you, you are very lucky that you are not face-to-face -face class. In the face-to-face -face class, I had some techniques to involve all of you. <laughs> mm, I wish, doctor. Yeah, could have been better. Okay, can you tell me? Uh, okay. What does it mean? Two, more than two samples, but samples are matched and paired. What does it mean? Give me some examples, some samples. In uh, experiment. Okay, then? Uh, whereby we use uh, the same group, but different condition, then we assess this is what we call as a repeated measure. For example, what do you measure? Uh, for example, in an experiment, uh, we use the same sample, but okay. this sample are exposed into two different conditions. And okay. every, uh, for example, in condition one, we measure it, and in condition two, we measure it again, and we so match it. This is, this is two samples. This is pre-test, post-test, before oh. and after. We have more than two paired samples. We discussed about that, yes? When we talk about paired sample t-test, we already uh, we had the same situation before and after. But I'm talking about two more than two paired sample. Very simple. Pre-test, post-test, follow-up. Right. Am I right? Sometimes... Yeah. Let me to tell you what is the story behind follow-up test. So when we do a study over the time, time one, time two, if you have only two time, pre-test, post-test, of course, this is two sample, paired sample. But if you continue as a longitudinal study, suppose that you measure something among the subject before starting your intervention, after completing the intervention, after one month, after six months. So these two calls follow up test. Oh. Why, why can, can, can someone tell me why we do, why do we need to measure the follow up? To see the continuous effect? Yes, the stability, the consistency of effects. Suppose that you, you, at the pre-test, after post-test, your students perform very well. Suppose during the pre-test and post-test, you expose your students to a new techniques of learning mathematics, but you stop. And then suddenly, in the next assessment, so means the effect of this intervention was a temporary effect compared to to this situation, suppose that in the second situation, the students is still improved. So means, despite you stop intervention here, still the impact of intervention working, right? Sometimes consistent, sometimes improving, sometimes decline. So the reason that always we advise students, of course, we have to measure, we have to make sure that it is possible, the possibility. 
so ideally, yes, ideally, when we do intervention and longitudinal study, the best idea is to, what do you call it, to make sure that uh, the impact of the, the impact of uh, intervention or our experiments is consistent. Clear? Clear, doctor. So now, remember, when we have pre-test, post-test, follow-up test, it is more than two, more than two. That's why when we want to analyze it, then we need to do the repeated measure ANOVA. And now I'm going to teach you one way repeated measure ANOVA. Remember, actually, to be honest, ANOVA is a very huge, uh, what you call it, set or groups of data analysis. Because later we can talk about two-way, three-way ANOVA, repeated measure ANOVA, ANCOVA, MANCOVA, multivariate analysis of variance. But remember, if you understand the ANOVA, the first simple one-way ANOVA, the concept is same. Interpretation will be same. These are different types of analysis of variance family. So it means this is the basic one that I'm going to teach you. One way ANOVA is the core. The rest of kind of analysis of variance are different types or extension of that concept. It's not too much difficult. Okay, now let's to teach you how to do the one way repeated measure ANOVA. Okay, let me to check my data, whether my data are... Okay, now this is a good example. Look at here. Uh, let me to remove some of this. Not necessarily repeated measure. Okay, sometimes you have a match. Okay, let me to give you another example. Suppose that you have 20 students. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me to create some data file because I think. Okay, suppose that I ask from, from 18 students, correct, to rank, to rank the, the, what do you call it, the different components of online teaching uh, modules in a spectrum uh, between 0 to 20, right? So means what I ask the students, I ask the student, please rate, Part A, Part B, and Part C. Zero to twenty. And I ask them, please, what, what they, what, how they evaluate the Part A. Part A, for example, is log in, uh, what they call it, uh, and registration. Part B, access to the resource. Part C, access to the multimedia. So I ask them. Uh, uh, between 0 to 20, give the score. A student number one, a student number one, okay, so this is the students, a student number, this is the part A, part B, part C. So now, each student has three score, right? These students 
was not satisfied from part A, but he was satisfied for the documents, but he was not satisfied for the multimedia. A student two, a student three. So now we want to compare among these three groups, right? They are matched. Why? Because each student, let me to make it bigger. Each student, correct, got three score and they are matched. When we talk about match sample or paired sample, it is not necessarily based on pre-test, post-test, follow-up test or time. So it can be different subject, but of course the subject should be measured in the same scale. You cannot compare different variables in different scales unless you standardize them or rescale them, then you can compare it. So now, well, I had a student uh, in, if I'm not mistaken, in build environment, and she worked on uh, satisfaction of the visitor among some local, uh, what do you call it, uh, park, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. She wanted to compare the satisfaction of, uh, what do you call it, users regarding to accessibility, security, aesthetic, uh, five domains, if I'm not mistaken. She was from UKM a long time ago. So, but the problem was the scoring system for this five domain was different because she measured, the, for example, for the accessibility, she used different scale for the safety, two items. So what we did, we just calculated the total score and then we convert it to the percentage and then we convert, we compare it. Okay, same as here. Suppose that this is a score of satisfaction for login page and the technical, this is document and so, and this is multimedia and access to the multimedia in the platform. Each student has three score, right? Correct? So what I need to do, I want to compare the score between A, B, C. We want to know, is there any difference among different parts in our platforms regarding to student satisfaction or not? So this is a parametric test. These are a score. Of course, first of all, I need to check the normality of this A, B, C as a dependent variable. Plots, normality plot with test. Now, Okay, is it normally distributed? Look at the p-value here. Okay, some of them, the skewness is zero. Cortis is, okay, it is some of them are, the, the, I mean, the number B has a problem. Let me to check the B. Yeah, it is a bit skewed. Okay, it is skewed because of a small sample size. And of course, it is not actual data. Okay, please assume that this data are normally distributed, correct? Except from me. <laughs> Forget, suppose that this data are normally distributed. Agree? It is not normally distributed, but we assume that data are normally distributed because I want to teach you the techniques and the methods. Okay? Agree? Okay. Okay. Thank you. So now let's go back and check it. So what I need to do, I go to the GLM and then repeated measure. So the general linear model is a, a group of a very, what do you call it, wide kind of a statistical test, which are basically all of them are different kind of ANOVA. Univariate analysis is multivariate, is MANOVA. Even we can do the MANCOVA, ANCOVA. And repeated measure also is a repeated measure ANOVA. All of them under GLM. So we go to the repeated measure ANOVA. Now we have to identify the type, the number of the measurements. How, how many measurements do we have here? We have three measurements. And just I just put the satisfaction. I have three level of satisfaction, three level, and add it, and then define. So then we just put A, B, C, D here, satisfaction. This is called within subject variable. So once you enter your data here, 
Of course, you can draw the plots for the satisfaction, like bar charts, including error bar with 95%. And then the post hoc test, we cannot do anything because there is no any grouping variable. Under options, descriptive statistic, can you see here estimated effect size and observed power? So remember, recently, many journals, they don't care about the significance. They want to make sure that your results, your findings are considerable. I mean, they have a considerable effect or, uh, for example, difference or relationship. At the same time, they want to make sure that your data support the minimum power and the minimum power is 80%. So that's why in some of statistical software like SPSS in all the new, uh, what do you call it, uh, modules and parts, they added these two, uh, what do you call it, uh, parameters, estimates. So we just select, and also we have the homogeneity test, but we don't need because we, there is no any grouping variables. This is match for the match. Uh, and paired sample, we don't need to test the homogeneity unless we want to run the two-way repeated measure ANOVA. As you can see here, there is another, uh, what do you call it, uh, environment and windows for between subject effect and covariate. I will explain it slowly. So this is the simplest form of repeated measure ANOVA. So that's all. Under options, Sorry, under e-means, e-means in the old version of SPSS, maybe some of you, you have installed the old version of SPSS. So this option e-means is located under options. You can see in the, these options under option. So now, but in the latest version after 25, they make it as a separate button. So I click on e-means, I just put satisfaction, Compare it with Bonferroni. There are three types of the post hoc test. As I mentioned earlier, the Bonferroni is the strongest and less biased. So continue and then OK. So now, as it can be seen here, the first table is descriptive statistic. The second table is a multivariate test. Please ignore this one. We don't look at it. Followed by that, we have a much lit test of sphericity. Okay, so this is another assumptions for the multivariate, uh, what do you call it, ANOVA. So for the multivariate ANOVA or RM, repeated measure uh, analysis of variance. So this test is important. This test make, should, should test the what do you call it, whether the error covariance is independent from what you call it, each other or not. This is very technical form. I, I just want to ignore it. I don't want to, to confuse you. But remember, the cookbook, very easy. If it's significant, if this test is significant, then you have to correct and adjust your results. If it's not significant, you don't need epsilon. Epsilon is a coefficient for correction of the, the results. Degree of freedom correction. So, and the common epsilon that we use is greenhouse geyser. So again, if you run repeated measure ANOVA, first you need to check the Marchley test of sphericity. If it's significant, then you need to use greenhouse geyser. But where is the greenhouse geyser? It is only a coefficient. And this coefficient have been applied in order to, in order to, to adjust our results. But where is the, where is the results? Next table. The next table is test of within subject effect. Let me to copy this table. Yeah, it's scary, right? A lot of tables, but don't worry. 
From this table, what we need to do, we just need to look at the satisfaction. We had three satisfaction. Are they significantly different? We just need to look at the p-value, but there are four p-value. Which p-value we need to use? Which p-value we have to use? One p-value is for a sphericity assume, and three p-value for green high geyser, honey folded, and lower bound. As I mentioned, if the sphericity is significant, then use the second line. So according to these results, is there any significant difference between satisfaction? Yes or no? Yes. So means the level of satisfaction for these three sections in our system are significantly different. They are not same. But remember, if this p-value was not significant, assume that this p-value was 0 0.174. Then, in the next table, then you need to report the first line. It is a sphericity assumed. If the sphericity assumed, it's still significant, right? But the numbers are same. The only things which is different is degree of freedom and, mean, and the variance. But since this ratio is sometimes, especially when the sample size are same, Correct? In, in more complicated data analysis, the value will be different. But in our case, all of them are same because the degree of freedom was adjusted for error and factors similarly. Anyhow, just remember, as a cookbook, very simple. When you do the repeated measure ANOVA, first, Check the normality. Second, once you run the repeated measure ANOVA, I have to buy a pen. Very difficult to write with mouse. Then you need to check the Sphericity. If a sphericity is significant, is not significant. If a sphericity is significant, then use the green house. If it if not significant, the first line. That's all. Clear? Yes. yes. Good. So now, according to these results, the satisfaction are different, but we don't know which of them are statistically different from each other. So what should I do? Post hoc, correct? If you remember, when I ran the ANOVA, when I ran the repeated measure ANOVA, under option under e means i did mean comparison so this is the look at here compare main effects of satisfaction using bone ferronine so that's why under results under results i have this table the pairwise comparison same as mean comparison that we had in one way and over so now i just copy this one in Excel file. Again, satisfaction A is one is A, this is A, and this is B, and this is C. This is A, C, this is B, this is C, A, B. So now, 
A and B are significantly different? No. So means there is no difference between satisfaction for part A and B. A and C are different? Yes. yes. Okay, B and A, we already talked about it, so we don't need this one. So B and C, are they significantly different? Yes. yes. So means, actually, A and A and B are same, but C from it's significantly different from both of them. Yes. Then, if you want to draw the charts, actually the system. So look at here, the highest satisfaction belongs to the part two, which is not significant from, let me to copy this table and then, uh, so now, the highest mean belong to part to part B, but it was not significantly different from part A. So means they are almost same, but both this part B and A are statistically higher than. So means the lower satisfaction belong to part C, correct? which is statistically lower than A and B. That's all. Finish. Clear? Yes. Okay, so now I want to make it a bit more complicated. Are you ready or you need a break? Okay, I will give you five minutes break before ending the session because we we will end our session by 4.30 today. So now it's 3.13, we, we will start at 3.20. Rest, drink a cup of coffee or <laughs> a small amount of sugar, <laughs> correct? Uh, and prepare yourself for the next, for the last round of first day. Okay, okay see you. See you then. Okay, are you ready? Yes. yes. Okay, there are some questions that in the chat box, if we have only two groups and not more, but it would rip. Okay, so I, 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 will, I will explain to you exactly after this part. We will do it together. It is called two-way repeated measure ANOVA, which is very common. That's why I, I will explain it in details. Okay. Yep. Uh, sometimes, especially in the real situation, especially people who do the experimental study, RCT, exper true experimental design, because when we talk about true experimental design, means we have two groups, right? This is very common. Let me to open. A delete. Okay, so now in the in the real situation, I know that some of you always include two groups, control and experimental design, and then you measure the outcome over the time. Pre-test, post-test, follow-up, no matter. This is called two-way repeated measure ANOVA. So how we can analyze the two-way repeated measure ANOVA? So now I'm going to teach you how to deal with this kind of uh, analysis. It's very simple. Back to this data set. This is a real data set. We have Two groups, of course, I need to change the numbers because last time I changed the numbers. Yeah, oops. So as you can see here, 
we have two groups, control and intervention, 108 subjects under control and 108 subjects, 50%, 50% under uh, experimental conditions. And then in this experimental condition, the researcher measure the quality of life. So this is the quality of life. Quality of life, pre-test, post-test. Quality of life actually in this study include, included five domains, overall quality of life, physical quality of life, psychological quality of life, social relationship quality of life, and the last one is environmental. So the research question is that, is there any significant real effect of intervention on quality of life or no? So this is general research questions. We want to compare whether the intervention was able to improve the quality of life from different aspect or not. And we just measure pre-test and post-test. Of course, if you have follow-up test, no worry, you can just add it as a follow-up test. But in this study, the researcher only measure pre-test and post-test, correct? So what we need to do? In this study, actually we have two groups. That is why we call it two-way repeated measure ANOVA. Why? Because one way is group, and one way is the time. So the, the reason that we put the name of two-way repeated measure ANOVA because we have two source of variation. One source of variation is group. And one source of variation is time. Correct? Clear? Clear. Yeah? Good. So now let's to close this extra windows, my computer. Hold on. I need to close all these extra windows. Okay, what I need to do? As the outcome is a continuous data, still we can use the parametric test. Correct? So for two-way repeated measure ANOVA, what I need to do? Analyze GLM repeated measure ANOVA. So let me to reset it. So I have time or test. I have two tests, pre-test, post-test. This is within subject effect. This is within subject effect. This is within subject because we have time and group. The time is within subject because everybody got to a score. This is called within subject because everybody got to a score. The time is a within subject factors. And groups is between group, between subject. So now in this, uh, what do you call it? The first uh, wizard or window, we just define the within subject factors. And the measurement name, the measurement name, for example, suppose that I just want to compare one by one. So now I have the overall quality of life, OA. OA is overall, I just put overall. Add and define. So now what I need to do, this is pretest and post-test for overall. I just move it here. The group is between subject effect or factors. That's all. Clear? Don't change the model. Always the model is full factorial design unless you want to add a term, but this is a bit advanced. I don't want to explain to move to that part. Uh, then we go to the plot. The plot, we put the test as a horizontal group as a separate line and add. I prefer to show the chart as a line. So then under post hoc test, we don't use it. Under means, e mean, okay, options. Descriptive statistic effect size and homogeneity test. This time we use the homogeneity test of variance. Right? Uh, can you give me a second? I have a call. Sorry.
Okay. Uh, regarding to homogeneity test of variance, why do we need to do the homogeneity test? Because we have two different groups, control and intervention. And that's all. Continue. And then under E means we want to compare between group test and interaction. But the problem is that the comparing the comparison only will be done among main effect. What does it mean main effect? Means between groups and between times. For the interaction, there is no possibility to do the comparison. I will explain you later. You can see the results. Then Bonferroni test continue and then okay. Okay, so this is descriptive statistic, mean and standard deviation for quality of life at pre-test and post-test. This is box test of equality of covariance matrix. Usually for small sample size, it is not significant. And when the sample size are equal for both groups, it can be ignored. But in the, in the real situation, maybe you can see that this test is significant. Then uh, uh, what do you call it? Of course, if the sample size are not equal, then you are not allowed to proceed with the repeated major ANOVA. It should, not, it should not be significant like this situation. But in some cases, when the sample size is huge, maybe you can see that this is significant, this test is significant, then you can ignore it if the sample size for both groups are equal. This is the multivariate test, we don't look at it. Again, we check the Matchley test of sparsity. As it can be seen here, under Matchley test of sparsity, there is no p-value. For for two by two design, I mean two groups by two times, the Matchley test cannot be calculated. There is no Matchley test. That's why the value, the p-value, and the chi-score value is zero. As it can be seen here, the greenhouse geyser, all the correction also is still same. So that's why no matter whether you use the first line or from this next table for the test of within subject effect, no matter whether you use the first line or second line, correct, all of them are same. Can you see here? Okay, the point is that when we have at two-way repeated measure ANOVA, there are three type of source of variation. Three source of variation. One source is time. One source is group. And the most important thing is time group. So when you want to report your results, you need to, this is the source of variation, SOV. Source of variation is time, groups, and interaction. So now when we want to report, let me to copy this table in Excel file, and then I will be able to control V. Okay, so now remember, this source of time, so is it significant? Yes or no? Yes. So yes. what does it mean? What does it mean? It means overall there was a difference between pre-test and post-test. The time was effective. And the next, the next is interaction. This is the most important effect that we need to look at it when you want when you run the two-way repeated measure ANOVA, the most important effect is the interaction effect. Is it significant? Yes. 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 <laughs> what does it mean? It means, please pay attention, this is very important, the point is here. When the interaction is significant, means two group over the time behave differently. They have different pattern of changes over the time. They are not same. Control and intervention over the time, they had different pattern, different behavior. When it's significant, means effect, probably the intervention was effective because groups were different over the time. 
when it's not significant, means both group behave same. So means there is no difference between groups over the time. And remember for experimental study, the most important factors effect is the interaction between group and time. Clear? Yeah. Yes. yes. That's good. And this is the error. Of course, the error, we just use it to test the significance. But under results, if you ignore the test of the within subject for the linear or quadratics, we don't talk about this. And this is the homogeneity test of variance. This is same as ANOVA. Let me to copy this one again. So this test indicated that for pre-test score and post-test score, can you mute your microphone, sorry? For pre-test and post-test score, the variance Excuse me, can you, can you mute your microphone? Thank you. The equality, this Leven test, I think the Leven test, uh, you understand, you're familiar with this. So the variances are homogeneous at pretest and post test, means control and experimental groups at pretest and post test, the variances are same. This is the variance at pretest and post test. So these variances are same. And specifically, especially, especially at the pretest, it should be same. But again, if sample size for both groups are same, there are some references that mention that if two groups are they have equal sample size, then you can ignore these assumptions in repeated measure and over. But of course, ideally, it should not be significant at pretest and post test. Okay, back to the results. Followed by that table, we have another table. And this is test between subject effect. So this Sorry, doctor, you are muted. Doctor? Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry about that. Sorry. I don't know what happened. Suddenly, I accident. I did not click on. Okay, let me to explain again. So remember, test equality of variance for both groups should be not significant. This is very ideal situation. But as long as groups, the N1 equal to N2, then you can ignore these assumptions. But as I mentioned, ideally, better to check the normal, the homogeneity of variance between groups at pretest and also at post-test. So in this study, at pretest and post-test, the variances are not significant. That is good. Perfect. Perfect. So we, we already met the assumption. From the results, there is another table which indicates the impact of group because this is the first table this is within subject. The next table is between subject. If I copy this table. So now, this subject, it shows that overall, overall, groups are statistically different or not? Are they different? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let me to show you how to report this ANOVA results. Data sample. Sample two-way repeated measure ANOVA. 
When you report, look at here, the summary of ANOVA table always we report like this. We report the effect of time, interaction, and group. We report only F value, P value, MS, and degree of freedom. So, and then we explain it very simple. We say that the effect of time, look at here, the finding for within subject effect test of repeated measure ANOVA was not significant. Then we report the F value, which is 2.781, the P value, and eta square. Do you know what is this? This is effect size. This is effect size. Okay, effect size I will discuss more tomorrow, not today. Correct? This is effect size. Followed by that, we have the interaction. Interaction is significant, yes. Despite over the time, there was no significant changes over Ali, but groups over the time behave differently. But again, look at here, groups also were not statistically significant. Only interaction was significant. Of course, the most important things for us is interaction. So means from all these tables that I showed you, from all these tables, from this table, what you need to take, this part, this part, and from between subject table, also you need to report only this table, this part. That's all. And then you summarize it as it is. This is academic style, APA style of reporting of result of repeated measure ANOVA. Okay, I will try to share with you some template or samples after workshop. Correct? Thank you. Okay. okay so thank you. According to these results, according to these results in our data, let me go. So the time. The effect of time was significant. The effect of interaction was significant. Differences over Ali between groups also significant. So, but still, still we have not reached to our research questions. Okay, over Ali we can say yes, the intervention was significant, but in details we need to do post hoc test. So remember. When we do pre test and post test for two groups, suppose that this is control groups, and here we have experimental groups. So can you tell me how many comparison do we have? We can compare, this is experimental and this is control. So I can compare groups at the pretest. So this is comparison between experimental and control at pretest. Comparison between control and experimental at post test. Also, I am able to compare the difference between pretest and post test for control and difference between pretest and post test for experimental. How many comparison? Four. Four. Is it clear? Clear. Yes, yeah, so thank you. Okay, now let's, okay, for mean comparison, of course, we need to do the pairwise comparison. So now we go to the second part. So now this table, this table is pairwise comparison, right? Between control and intervention. Let me to copy this one again to Excel.
So this table shows that the differences between groups is significant or not? Significant. But this table does not make sound because we don't know this difference is for T1 or for T2. Actually, this is rubbish. We don't want to look at the overall effects. So look at the next table in output. This table compare between test one and test two. Let me to copy again this table in Excel file. So look at here again. This is comparing between pretest and post-test or post-test with pretest, no matter. Is it significant? Yes. But we don't know this difference belong to the control or belong to the experimental groups. Again, this is rubbish. So what should I do? I want to answer to this comparison. I want to compare the green and red circle. I want to compare pretest, post-test for control and experiment. I want to compare experimental and control at post-test. And then followed by that, I want to compare between pretest and post-test one time for experiment, one time for control. And this table that SPS has produced for me cannot be used to answer to that comparison, right? What shall I do? And this is the story. Many students later, they split their file and do this comparison with t-test, independent t-test and pair t-test, which is totally wrong. Don't do t-test after you run repeated measure ANOVA. Okay, maybe you ask yourself, okay, Dr. Mahmoud, what shall I do? Now, I want to teach you the magic. Are you ready? Ready. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay, La. So now the magic is syntax. Okay, when we do the repeated measure ANOVA, when I define, okay, you remember? Okay, we get the results. This time again, I paste. So when I paste the result, I can see the syntax. Is it clear? This is the syntax. Please pay attention. This is the, 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 the final part, and it's very important to understand this concept. Please. So when I click on syntax, as it can be seen here, there are two lines. Let me to copy this syntax in a Word file and make it bigger. So this two line, this line compare. Can you, can you just, let's translate it. So it shows that we need a table comparing groups by Bonferroni. So means this is comparing between control and intervention. And this is comparing table between test, test one and test two by Bonferroni. So now what I need to do, I copy this part, interaction, and paste it in instead of group here and instead of paste here. After compare, I open a bracket and then put the groups. And the next line, after compare, I open the bracket and just put the test. So now, let me to just copy these two lines. Copy. If I go back to my syntax and replace these two lines with these two, paste it. So now, as it can be seen here, so what happened? These two lines, I change it from main effect to the interaction. Interaction by group, interaction by test. Now, let's run it. Run it. Okay, now we go back. Nothing changed, nothing changed, nothing changed until here. So now look at here, this table. Let me to copy this table. As it can be seen here, this is comparison between what? Control and intervention at? Test one. Pre-test. Is it significant? No. No. Not what sure. is this? 
What is this? This is post test. Post test. Post test. Post test. Are they significant? Yes. 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 So yes. now, now we don't need to run the t test. We don't not. We need to. Uh, this is wrong. And unfortunately, many because since SPSS automatically does not generate this table, many people assume that that SPSS are not able to do this test. No, SPSS is able, but you need to understand the statistic. You need to understand how to deal with the syntax. And OK, so now I answer to one question. At pretest, groups are not significant. At post test, are significant. Let's go back to the graph. So means the green one, I did it. At the pretest, they are not significant. But at post test, this difference is significant. Done. Well, at the same time, I'm going to compare the pretest and post test for experimental and pretest and post test for experimental and control. So what I need to do? If you go to results, following table, look at here. This is another pairwise comparison. Let me to copy this one and then paste it in Excel sheet. Can you see here? What is this? This. This is, and, uh, let me to a bit open it. So now, this is the, sorry. This is the time one and time two, right? For groups and time one and time two for intervention. So is there any difference between time one and two for control? No. no. In intervention. Is there any difference? Yes. 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 So look at here. Asterisk means the mean difference is significant at 0 0.05 level. Done. Finish. So this is two way repeated measure on a wall. If you have if you have another test, follow up test, again same. Nothing will be changed. Clear? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so how did you find it? Easy. Very simple. Within a second. So that's why when we report our results, after reporting this ANOVA table, we compare like this. Look at here. The mean and the standard deviation. The mean and the standard deviation at pretest. The mean and standard deviation at post test. So this is differences between groups. Differences between groups. So means differences between these two numbers, not significant. Differences between these two numbers, not significant. And then we add another p-value. This is comparison between tests. So means between pretest and post-test. Is it significant? Yes. For intervention, is it significant? Yes. Followed by that, we present the charts. As you can see here, as you can see here, this is the chart. It means we have improvement here. But this improvement is not significant. But remember, the scale, you can change it, correct? Suppose that my scale originally is from 1 to 5. So I just double click here, double click here, go to the scale in SPSS. My original scale is between 1 to 5. So I standardize it. So now I can see here this graph. Copy this graph. So now, as it can be seen here, this difference is significant. 
Differences from pretest to post test also significant, but in control groups, nothing changed. There was changes, but not statistically significant. Done. Habis. Finish. <laughs> okay. Uh, is it clear now? I think the last one, K1922944, the user. You asked me the same question and I did it. Clear? Yes. Yes, thank you, Doctor. Good. Okay, don't worry. Uh, the session is recorded. Please, after you receive the file, watch, practice. The key of success is practice. Okay, so now we move to the last part of comparison test, which is non-parametric test. I want to do it very fast, <laughs> correct? Within half an hour. So don't worry. It's very fast. It's very easy. Of course, uh, these are non-parametric tests. The non-parametric tests always known as free distribution, uh, what do you call it, uh, test, and compare to parametric test, they are they have less power, correct? So these are advantage of the non-parametric test when you don't know anything about the population, especially when you are dealing with the categorical data and when you are dealing with a small sample size, these are the advantage. But it is less powerful, less efficient, and the probability of type error two is larger than uh, for a given type of uh, type error one. But what is the type error one and two? I hope that all of you are familiar with type error one and two. So when your hypothesis is, is true and mistakenly you reject it, this is type error one. Of course, when it's, when it's false and you reject it, this is right decision. When it's true and you do not reject it, this is right decision. This is p-value or alpha. When it's false, but you do not reject it and you accept it, you have the type error two or uh, beta is happen. So this beta, one minus beta in a statistic, we call it power. And minimum acceptable power for any analysis is 0 0.80%. So means if your power is more than 80%, that is perfect. So look at here, if I go back to analyze data, repeated measure, define, option, and then I select observe power, click OK. Now look at my power, the pow my power for, uh, look at here, the power for interaction, it's not too high, it's 62%. So means the type error one, type error two, the probability of type error two is around 38%. Type error one is good, low, but type error two is high. So many people, unfortunately, they, they don't know how to report it. And as I mentioned earlier, nowadays, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it is advised to report not only alpha means p-value, but also the power. So when you compare, of course, I need to do the syntax. Let me to do the syntax, I paste it. So I need to add the power. Yeah, the power, the power, the power. Alpha, okay, here. I need to observe power copy in this syntax, in my previous syntax, because this is the wrong syntax. And then I just run it again. Now I go down, when I compare, look at here, intervention, this is interesting, very interesting. The effect of intervention between one and two, how much is the power? Look at here, 99%, perfect. Despite in control, the power is 38. So the problem is that when you do, when you calculate the overall power is less, but when you break the power according to the groups, 
then you can see the adequate power for intervention. And it can be achieved only if you do the manipulation in the syntax. Only because of this. Clear? Yeah. Okay, back to uh, non-parametric test. So I just want to spend for each of these tests two minutes. <laughs> it's very simple. As long as you understand the concept of comparison with parametric test, you just need to change the statistical test. The first one is one sample sign rank test for the median. Remember, for all non-parametric tests, we report the median, not the mean. You can report the mean, but you, 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 you have to emphasize much more on median. You need to report, you discuss based on the median, correct? Because some of data are not normally distributed, or of course, if they are categorical or ordinal data, again, you need to report the median. Clear? The first test, let me to close all these windows. Look at here, I can save my syntax. Save the syntax of repeated measure ANOVA. I have two syntax in my study, so close. And let me to close all these windows and open a new. No. OK. Assume that A2 is not normally distributed. And I want to compare the median of A3 with 25. This is my standard, my gold standard, my no. So what I need to do? Go to analyze, go to the non-parametric test, one sample test. Under one sample test, you go to the fields, you deselect all of this variable and only keep the A1. Under setting, customize it, compare median to hypothesized value, which is 25. Will Coxon rank test. That's all. Run it. So the median in my sample is how much? In my sample, the median is 29. The hypothetical median is 25. Are they statistically different? So you just need to look at this table. So this is the Z value. This is the Z value. What you need to report is Z value and then the P value. Are they statistically different? So means the median of my sample and then the hypothetical median. Are they statistically different or yes or no? Yes. That's all. Finish. So means the median of our sample is 29 which is statistically and significantly different from 25. It's more than hypothetical median. Finish. That's all. Clear? Yeah, thank you. Good, very simple. So again, just remind you, it is one sample but my outcome is not normally distributed or maybe data is qualitative. OK, look at here. So this is suppose that it is Likert scale, A9, 1 to 5. And I want to compare this Likert scale with the median of 2. So I want to see whether it is significantly different from median of 2. What I need to do? I know I need to go to analyze. Again, non-parametric test, one sample t-test. So go to the object to fields. This time, I want to select A9. I select the A9, and then this time I set it by two. Oops, what's the problem? What's the problem? 
this test is only valid for continuous or ordinal data. My data is not ordinal. Look at here. My data is a nominal data. Look at here. It is nominal data. What shall I do? Ordinal. Remember, the new option, the new statistical test in SPSS are very sensitive about the type of measure. So means when you enter your data into SPSS, make sure that you identify the correct form of the measure. We have three types of measure, scale, ordinal, or nominal. One sample Wilcoxon test cannot be used for nominal data. It is only valid for ordinal and a scale. So that's why A9, I convert it to the ordinal. Now going back to analyze non-parametric test, one sample t-test, and then A9, and then we compare it with two. This is my hypothetical median, run it. So, look at here. The hypothetical median of my sample is what? Two. And the observed also is two, but it is statistically significant. Correct? Sometimes these things can be happen since the frequency of data, and because especially for categorical data, are not adequate in some categories. But the ranking, the ranking of this, this A9, actually, if I do, for example, A9, if you remember, my cutoff point was two, right? If I sorted ascending, suppose that, actually, I want to compare between two groups, groups below two and above two, right? So as you can see here, the frequency of subjects below two is 137, and groups above is, of course, less than 137. This frequency are statistically different. Despite the median are not same, but that difference cannot be seen in the result of the uh, Wilcoxon rank test. So that's why sometimes, instead of Wilcoxon rank test, correct, with the hypothetical median, we convert it to a binary data, and then we do the <clears throat> chi-square test. A bit complicated, I want to avoid explanation about this, but in case if you struggling with that test, uh, then there is an option for you to create another variable here, A9, as a binary data, below two and above two, and then you compare the frequency of this data. That's all. The next statistical test that I'm going to explain is independent two samples. And the test is human Whitney test. The human Whitney test is equal to independent t test. Assume that I want to compare the A5, which is a which is an ordinal data, between groups. Let me to exchange it to the A7. A7 is an ordinal data, and I want to compare the A7 between groups and intervention. I have two groups, and this is the income. I want to compare the income. The income is a categorical ordinal data, right? So I have two groups, two independent groups. And I want to compare an ordinal data. Which test should I use? Two independent samples, U, Mon, Whitney. That's good. You go to analyze, non-parametric test, and independent sample test. So of course we have to scan the data. So under fields, groups is your group, A7 is your test value, income. And then, there are different type of, don't use automatic, customize it, and man with new you. The man with new you, run it. 
Are they statistically different or not? So, is there any difference between control and intervention for income? Yes or no? no. Hello? No. Yeah, they are not statistically different. Why? So look at here. It's very simple. Actually, the new version of SPSS make it simple. Let me to uh, just copy this one and then paste it in Excel file. So now look at here. SPSS make it simple for you. Oops, sorry. Now look at here. What is this? Null hypothesis. So what is the null hypothesis? The distribution of A7 is the same across category of group 1. So the p-value is significant or not? No. And then decision. Retain the null hypothesis. So means they are same. They are not significantly different. <laughs> Actually, uh, some of the statistical suffers make us more lazy. So they, they convert us to people who don't think, who don't try to think. So look at here, even they give us the decision. So they are not statistically different. Of course, if you want to report the descriptive statistic for the income, for groups, then you need to calculate the median and range or IQR, interquartile range. So for that one, if you want to report descriptive statistics, because here we have the Z value, this is the Z value, and this is the P value. We report only these two. Some people, they want to report the man with me U value, but it is huge number. Don't report it. So use the standardized man with me. And this is the mean rank. So look at here. The mean rank of control is equal to the mean rank of intervention. Can you see here? 100, oh, 108 and 108. There is no significant difference between ranking of income between two groups. Control and intervention are same. Clear? Yes. Yes. Is it difficult? Um, yes or no? No. Very simple. The statistics become easy now. <laughs> okay, La. So now, the next statistical test. We have two samples, but they are paired. And then we want to compare these two samples. Paired sample. So what is the test? Will Coxon. Assume that we want to convert, we, we want to comp suppose that pre-A and post-B are not normally distributed. And then we cannot do the T-test. What shall I do? Suppose that I ask 10 of students randomly in this class, do you like a statistic? They score and then after Dr. Mahmoud finished her work, his workshop, ask the same questions. Do you still like to continue a statistic? So I want to see whether my teaching methods was able to keep people still interested to statistics or not. So I have pre-score and post-score. But what I did, my data is qualitative. I strongly agree to I strongly disagree. So if I want to compare between these two samples, pre-test, post-test, analyze, non-parametric test, Related samples, paired samples. So, but the problem is here. 
it is not nominal, it is ordinal data. So, excuse me, can you mute your microphone? Thank you. So now, if I want to compare between pretest and post-test, non-parametric test, related sample, fields, post-test and pretest. That's all. Run it. What happened? I forgot. I forgot to customize it. So when you want to customize it, then, then you need to run the Wilcoxon match pair two samples. Run it. So now, according to this study, is there any significant differences between pretest and postest or not? Yes. Yes. So there. So people's. How much was the rank before and after? So as it can be seen, actually this difference, this table, it's a bit uh, details. Positive difference means the percentage or the number of subjects they have positively changed. As it can be seen here, nine of the students negatively change. What does it mean? So means their score from pretest to post test was decreased. And only one case, nothing changed. And that case is called tie. So now this is number of ties means one. Only one case was not changed across the time. There is no positive changes. Look at here, if I just, if I just change it, for example, this one, if I just change it to four and this is five, then if I run my statistical test again, now you can see here two people's positively change, eight people negatively. So means, and there is no any tie, right? But the point is that the score of positive change is high or negative than negative. So means, there is a significant changes, but this changes was negative. So means the score of the people was reduced. What does it mean? So means my teaching method has a problem because I was not able to keep their initial interest to statistic when they enter to my class and everybody now hate the statistic. <laughs> is it true or not? <laughs> not true. <laughs> okay, la. So this is pretest post test, correct? And again, independent sample t test, one way ANOVA when data are normally distributed, when you have more than two samples. The equal to one way ANOVA is called Kruskal Wallis test. The Kruskal Wallis test is exactly one way ANOVA, but for non normal data or categorical data. Look at here. Suppose that in the original data, I have three types of education. In my data, I have three groups of education. I have 16 subjects at the primary level, 139 at high school, and 61 at graduated school. I want to compare the income between these three groups. Income is a categorical variables, right? Income is a categorical variables. And I have three independent groups, primary, secondary, and for example, I forgot the, the last category, graduate. I have three groups. What shall I do? Graduate. I have three groups, primary, secondary, and graduate. I want to compare the income. I know that income is, a is an ordinal data. 
I cannot use the theta, I cannot use the ANOVA. I have to use Kruskal Wallis. So in order to run the Kruskal Wallis test, I go to analyze non-parametric test, independent sample test. That's all. We go back to the fields. The A7 <clears throat> is income, but this time I want to compare it across A4, which is education level. Under settings, when you customize it, select Kruskal Wallis test. It call Kruskal Wallis one way ANOVA, car sample. And multiple comparison can be done either using all pairwise comparison or a stepwise a step down. I will do both and you can see the results. Let's try to all pairwise comparison, right? So is there any significant difference of income among educational category? Yes or no? Yes. What is this? Rejected. Rejected null hypothesis. What was the null hypothesis? The null hypothesis is let me to copy this table again. The null hypothesis is it says that the distribution of income is the same across of education. The p-value was zero. So the null hypothesis is rejected. So means they are not same. If you want to need, if you need more information, if you go down, this is the test statistic, which is chi square test, and then the p-value. And now I can see the details. This is the pairwise comparison. Very simple, look at here, interesting. So now I have this table. The difference the difference between primary and high school, are they statistically different? No. No. Primary with graduated are, are significantly different? Yes. High school with graduated are significantly different? Yes. Okay, remember, in the new approach of the Kruskal Wallis test, in the old version, there was no out post hoc test. This is an option that have been added to the SPSS in the, if I'm not mistaken, in, in the latest version after 22. 22 above SPSS, they provided this pairwise comparison. Because if you want to know, under non-parametric test, uh, still the, op the old options are available. So this is the car independent sample. So look at here, the car independent sample is that, very simple, A7, across A4, compare between one to three, for example, Kruskal Wallis test. So when I run it, as you can see here, this test only shows that there is significant, that's all. No post hoc test. But in the new option, in the recent and updated version of the, uh, what you call it, non-parametric test, as you can see here, they put, they added, multiple comparison options, all pairwise, and also a stepwise, a step down. A stepwise, a step down is look like Duncan. Look at here. Now we have subset, same as Duncan test. Of course, the table is much more uh, suitable for academic reporting. The subset is for so look at here, they are totally different according to the subset, according to the subset, because here, all of them, according to the original p-value, are significant. But as it can be seen, we have adjusted significance. In the subset, in the homogeneous subset, it is not based on adjusted p-value. It is based on the 
the the raw value of the p value that's why all of them are statistically significant but when we look at the adjusted p value primary and high school are same okay so this is called cruciscal valleys and the last is when you have more than two samples and they are paired then you have to use the cruciscal valleys test assume that in this example this is the first this is pre this is day one and this is the last day of workshop so this is pre this is day one and this is i call you all of you after one month and ask you how do you feel about the statistic now So now I want to compare four measurement. Now, sorry, three measurement over the time. Pre-test, after one day, after one month. In this case, I need to use the Friedman test. How? Very simple. You go to analyze, non parametric test, related sample. I add day one and one month. And now go to the settings. Now I don't use the Wilcoxon, I use Friedman. The Friedman, again, I have the all pairwise comparison. Run it, run it. So, is there any significant changes over the time for this? For, for a statistic, over, over Ali, yes, there is significant differences. So it was two, decrease, and then increase. And these changes are statistically significant. So is there any significant, look at here, this is the pairwise comparison, again, for related sample. So between day one, and pre, is there any significant differences? Yes or no? No. Between day one and month one, is it significant? Yes. But between pre and one month, so nothing happened. So means I what what happened? I just you, you just you just go back to the original uh, situation. Initial situation, that's all. Okay, this is because of the practice. Okay, so we almost cover all the statistical tests, but for repeated measure ANOVA, I also teach you the two-way repeated measure ANOVA. Okay, that's all for today. It's almost 4.30 and we are ending the session, and I hope that you enjoy. Of course, a statistic will be boring if you want to learn many topics in the one day, but no choice. <clears throat> this is the, I don't know. To be honest, I, I'm not agreed to teach a statistic in such a way, but uh, this is a accepted format for running the workshop, and I don't have any choice. But please be patient and keep working consistently and practicing. Any questions? If or not, we can stop, uh, finish the session right now. We and we'll meet you all tomorrow. You're welcome. Thank you, doctor. Wow. You're welcome. Thank you so much, doctor. You're welcome. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Bye. Thank you, Doctor Mama. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, take care. Take care. Thank doctor. you.